breath. Okay, let's resume. Chapter 4, Vaishnava Sanyas. Being transcendently perfect, even before coming to this world, Tila Bhakta Siddhanta Saraswati did not assume sanyas for his own spiritual benefit. But sanyas is required for preaching because those who follow it strictly are widely respected and their authority accepted. Therefore, just as Lord Chaitanya had taken sanyas to attract people to his message, so did Srila Bhakta Siddhanta Saraswati. Other important reasons for his assuming and awarding sannyas were to provide formal roles of spiritual leadership within the pilot Daivavarnashama Vaishnava community that he proposed to establish, to uphold the worshipable status of the Paramahamsa Babaji dress taken by his gurus, Shila Jagannath Das Babaji, Shila Sachidananda Bhuktivinod, and Shila Gauruti Sodas Babaji, and to provide practical living manifestations of. Yukta Vairagya as a challenge to the misconceptions of renunciation embodied in Mayavada Sanyasa and contemporary Babaji life. However, reintroducing Sanyasa into the Gaudiya Sampradaya would prove to be one of Tilabhakta Siddhanta Saraswati's most contentious innovations. Strictly speaking, it's not an innovation. Uh, I'll just Let me see if I can trace it. There is uh, oh, what is this? No, that is. There's a verse in the 11th canto. Jnananishthun viraktova, mad bhaktova anabe shakaha, salingan ashamam styakva chared, avidhi go charaha. A learner transcendentalist dedicated to the cultivation of knowledge and thus detached from external objects. That's one scenario. Or my devotee who is detached even from desire for liberation. That's another scenario. Both neglect those duties based on external rituals or paraphernalia. Their conduct is beyond the range of rules and regulations. So um, they have given up Salingan Ashrama. They've, uh, they've given, up, given up their Ashrama Dharmas. And they've also given up the external symbols, Linga refers to the rituals, external regulations, including certain symbols. Uh, Brahmachari dresses in a particular manner, dress, dresses in a particular manner. Panaprastha in a particular manner, sannyasi in a particular manner. They have certain external uh, appearances according to the scriptures. But even that, uh, when a person is fully transcendental, he should give up. So here, yeah, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, 
उत्पन्न प्रेम है वो भक्त संकल्प सलिंगान आशुमांस किया जाए दैट पर्सन हु हैज अटेंड प्रेम कृष्ण प्रेम दैट डिवोटी वाज अटेंड प्रेम ही इज द वन हु कैन गिव अप ऑल आश्रम धर्मस इंक्लूडिंग द लिंगस और द एक्सटर्नल सिंबल्स अनुत्पन्न प्रेम ना तो निर्लिंग आश्रम धर्मांस किया जाए इत्यर्थल अभ्यते but the one who has not attained uh, uh, prema bhakti such a person uh, he can he should give up the various uh, forms of dharma not in consideration with uh, the symbols of uh, his ashrama so uh, okay fine so bhakti siddhanta sasita was idea was those who have accepted baba ji vesha uh, wearing a white dress which signifies that he <clears throat> is no longer carrying out any of the duties of the brahmacharya ashram or the grihastha ashram or the vanakrishna ashram or sanyasa ashram he is exclusively engaged in the activities of sadhana bhakti the, the activities of bhakti yoga that's all does not engage in adharma Nor does he engage in any material dharma, including the ashrama dharma. So that is uh, the Paramahamsa dress. That Paramahamsa dress is for those who have attained that form of spiritual perfection. However, Bhakti Vinod Thakur noted that a few centuries back they started to award this Paramahamsa vesha, this uh, external. Uh, dress of a baba ji to those who are not sufficiently qualified so uh, what is it and such a tour following uh, vishnu chakravarti and others he pointed out that those who have not come to that point should you know they can be sanyasis within the varnashrama system <clears throat> they should not they should not pretend to be that which they are not traditionally renunciation in the gaudiya sampradaya meant becoming a withdrawn baba ji absorbed in hearing and chanting the names of krishna but nearly all baba ji at that time were uh, it is this is traditional not in any authoritative sense it is just historically it was like this but we do know that uh, the six go swamis they were preaching rupa did say that writing books is also preaching Vishnu Chakravarti wrote, Balaji Vidya Bhushan wrote. So they are not, you know. One should not mistakenly think that uh, they are, that uh, they were necessarily Bhajanandis. But nearly all Baba Ji's at that time, at that time meaning, uh, at the time of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, were Prakrita Sahajiya, so far removed from the ideal of the six Go Swamis. that they were widely taunted as a class of males okay now let me just open my maria webster mariam webster so that i can look for all of this name a tricky deceitful fellow moreover even if observed immaculately ascetic life was largely irrelevant to the general populace who for their practical religious needs looked to the caste ko swamis and smarta brahmans yet these priests were usually as devoid of genuine spiritual consciousness as those they purported to guide the ones that they claimed to be guiding even a few caste ko swamis who themselves strictly observed devotional principles were mostly unable to discipline or train their theoretical disciples and virtually none of the supposed followers of chaitanya mahaprabhu had any inkling of his desire for widespread preaching nor the varvidal to effect it the resources the money to bring about that clearly a change of paradigm was required if gaudi vishnu dharma in its pure form were to survive and mahaprabhu's edict mahaprabhu's order Mahaprabhu's teaching of worldwide sankirtan 
Mahaprabhu's uh, direction that there should be worldwide Sankirtan be fulfilled. Thus, Srila Bhakta Siddhanta Saraswati is providing realistic, authentic, and dynamic outgoing spiritual leadership by investing Tridanda Sanyasis, same as Tridandi Sanyasis, was the first of several measures for giving new steerage, for providing new direction and emphasis to the Gaudiya tradition, transforming it into a global mission present, presenting Krishna Bhakti in a manner relevant to modernity. Vaishnava sannyas being unheard of in Bengal, till Saraswati Thakur and his disciples had to repeatedly withhold, uh, sorry, repeatedly uphold its validity to skeptical inquirers, many of whom cited a Brahmavarata verse that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself had quoted, inter interdicting sannyas in Kali Yuga. Prohibiting sannyas in Kali Yuga. Ashwamedham gavalam hum sannyasam palapaitrikam devarena sutotpatim kalopancha vivarja yet. Five acts forbidden in Kali Yuga are horse sacrifice, cow sacrifice, accepting sannyas, offering oblations of flesh to forefathers, and begetting children in the wife of one's brother. The Bhaktisiddhanda Saraswati would reply that Mahaprabhu had cited this reference to a river to sinful anti Vedic Muslim magistrate who wanted to justify beef eating on the basis of Vedic scripture. And within that debate, the topic of sannyas was mentioned only circumstantially. In other words, Mahaprabhu never stressed prohibition of sannyas, but instead demonstrated the contrary shortly thereafter by himself embracing sannyas. Now, Mahaprabhu, he never did anything in opposition to the scriptures. When he was a grihastha, he followed the rules and regulations of grihastha ashrama meticulously. Uh, this is uh, uh, pointed out by Vrindavananda Astrakur. Uh, and Sanyas Dharma also, the Lord followed very meticulously. We know that from Taitani Tirtamrita. So now, if accepting Sanyas and Kali Yuga in its own, in its actual literal sense itself is meant to be scripturally forbidden, then why did the Lord himself uh, take Sanyas? Nor in so doing did he violate sannyas, violate shastra, because the injunction forbidding sannyas and kali is from a Rajasik Purana meant for karmis and applies to karma sannyas to be undertaken exclusively by pure Vedic Brahmanas who no longer exist in kali yuga and thus whose mode of renunciation should not be imitated by unqualified men. See, in the uh, system of karma kanda also, there are allowances for the four ashramas. Um, so the, the, there are those who take sannyas from the perspective of karma kanda. They base it on in, injunctions uh, that are present in the scripture for them. Now that is forbidden in Kali Yuga. Otherwise, there is no other way to explain so many sannyasis uh, amongst the bona fide practitioners of Vedic Dharma, including even Shankaracharya. Um, what to speak of uh, several other acharyas. Ramanuja Acharya took sannyas, Madhva Acharya took sannyas when he was very young, 12 years old or something like that. Um, we know. Um, there were other sannyasis also. Chidara Swami was a sannyasi. So, uh, obviously, they also know they have come across this statement also. So, here sannyas refers to uh, sannyas within the Karma Kanda system. Chila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati further explained that this scriptural directive was never meant to restrain suitable persons from dedicating their whole self to the intrinsic function of the soul, namely service to the Supreme Lord Krishna. Moreover, that Smarta Raghunandhan had prescribed a full day fast as atonement for failing to offer respect upon first seeing a sannyasi confirmed that even the most fastidious adherence to Shastriya requirements had recognized the concept of sannyas in Kali Yuga. 
See, there was one smarter than him. He wrote various compilations, um, different topical compilations. You would take a particular theme and he would uh, give uh, quotations from various smritis pertaining to that. If I remember correctly, I think he wrote some 20 such compilations. So he is known as the Smarta Raghunantham. Um, so now, um, he was very meticulously uh, looking at various uh, scriptural injunctions according to particular topics. But even the very fact that he recognized uh, and he is talking about Kali Yuga. He's talking of Kali Yuga. He's not talking about some previous Yuga because uh, there is a section. Uh, if I remember correctly, when it comes to charity, he notes in Kali Yuga these particular types of charity are recommended and so on. So he is very much sensitive to the current time of Kali Yuga. So when he presents a quote which says that one should do full day fast. As a prize chitta, as an atonement, if you don't offer obeisances uh, upon seeing a sannyasi, so what does that mean? That means even uh, that uh, Smartha Raghunandan recognizes that sannyasi is bona fide. Ideological enemies further accused Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati of impropriety for taking sannyas by himself. But the precedent had been set by the great Vaishnava Acharya Sri Ramanuja. Ramanujacharya himself had to take sannyas just by himself. He meditated on the lotus feet of Sri Yamanacharya and uh, he took sannyas. The Sri Vaishnavas do provide some scriptural quote uh, allowing that uh, uh, allow, allowing that uh, under certain peculiar unavoidable circumstances a person can do this. Although in recent generations, sannyas in the Gaudiya Sampradaya had been practically unheard of, Hila Bhaktasiddhanda Saraswati pointed out that not only was Lord Chaitanya a sannyasi, but so were his guru and parama guru that nine sannyasi associates of Mahaprabhu are listed in Sri Chaitanya Chirtamrita as roots of the Chaitanya tree, and that Sri Mat Prabodhananda Saraswati, a prominent devotee of Lord Chaitanya, was a Tridanda sannyasi. He was a sannyasi with Tridanda. Furthermore, the seminal acharyas of the four, Vaish four recognized Vaishnava Parampara, Sri Vishnu Swami, Sri Nibhaga, Sri Ramanuja, and Sri Madhva, and numerous others in their discipular lines, their disciplic lines, had taken sannyas in Kali Yuga. Shila Sarsavi Thakur accepted and later bestowed sannyas according to the ceremony described in Samskara Deepika, Gopal Bhatta Goswami's book, Samskara Deepika, for inducting renunciants. Uh, which had become identified with the right known as giving bhik to Babaji's uh, Babaji initiation. He and his sannyasis dressed in the ankle length red cloth of sannyas, similar to that of Ramakrishna mission sannyasis, whose robes had become familiar and respected in Bengal. Instead of ridandas of uncovered tied sticks like those of the Sri Sampradaya, Gaudiya Mat Sanyasis carried three dandas wrapped in strips of red cloth resembling the sannyas rods of Mayavadis in North India. To the three sticks that represented dedication of body, mind and speech in service to the, the Lord, Shri Sarsu Thakur added another stick to symbolize the jiva and at the top of the danda placed a small curved stick symbolizing an ax for cutting non-devotional theories. Gaudiya Mat Sanyas differed from that within the established lines of Shankara, Ramanuja, and Madhva in that it was not awarded solely to men of Brahman caste and because horoscopes of prospective candidates were not consulted for ascertaining their fitness for lifelong renunciation. Traditional Bengali Vaishnavas objected that the status of Sanyas invites respect and thus transgresses Lord Chaitanya's precept of considering oneself lower than straw that sannyas being a role within Varnashrama is not meant for followers of Lord Chaitanya and that red dog for renunciants is directly against the Sri Chaitanya Jirtamrita statement 
Rakta Vastra Vaishnava Paritena Juhai. It is unbefitting that a Vaishnava wear red cloth. And thus, it's a deviation from the line of the six Goswamis who had worn white. And moreover, is particularly unsuitable for Vaishnavas due to being similar to the apparel, the garment of impersonalist sannyasis. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati explained that by embracing sannyas, a devotee undoubtedly maintains a position within Varnashrama Dharma, which implies that he is still endeavoring for perfection. In other words, he is a sadhaka. The moment you accept the external symbols of a particular ashrama, uh, it, it automatically it is a social statement that you have accepted the authority of Varnashrama Dharma, which is another way of saying that I am a sadhaka. In the Gaudiya Vaishnava line, only sadhakas uh, they accept the rules and regulations of Varnashrama Dharma uh, strictly. The, those who are Siddha, uh, that means they have no tendency for sinful activities or pious activities. They can give up material dharma also. Varva Dharman, Mekam Sharanam Raja, that is Krishna's own injunction, ultimate injunction. <clears throat> they have come to that point. But those who have not, who are preparing to come to that point, they need to function within their ashrama. So this itself is a statement that uh, I, I'm accepting sannyas means that I'm within uh, within the ashrama system, the varnashrama system, rather than posing as if already having attained it. For a true paramahamsa is situated in his eternal spiritual identity, far above even the stage of sense control. But once that soul is hardly to be found among millions, the imitative Babaji's knee length of white cloth girded at the loins was meant to symbolize the total vairagya and purity of the six Goswamis. It hardly any could meaningfully emulate that. Hardly anybody could meaningfully follow that. Indeed, many Babaji shamelessly flouted. They shamelessly broke uh, basic moral principles. Now, there is no spirituality without morality. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself stressed it. So, there's no question of uh, you know, if you're, if you're on the sadhaka stage, you cannot imitate uh, the activities of the six course one. Certainly, himself, a Paramahamsa, Hila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati wanted to establish that the advanced realization of a Paramahamsa cannot be attained simply through mimicry. And anyone aspiring for that platform should prudently remain humble, should uh, Should be wise, recognize reality, and thus remain humble and position himself as the servant of a Paramahamsa. He commented, knowing himself unequal to his Paramahamsa Guru, a Vaishnava accepts sannyas to remain the eternal servant of his Guru. Thinking himself unfit to dress as a Paramahamsa, a Vaishnava accepts sannyas out of humility, not pride, by adopting a uniform dissimilar to that of the ignoble Babaji's. Ignoble. Ignoble. Characterized by baseness, lowness, or meanness, low class. Srila um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati also sought to be also sought to avoid being equated with them. Nowadays, many people who do not even perform devotion service but instead indulge in crass immorality. Just absolute low class immorality are attired in a manner, they are dressed in a manner reserved for devotees on the superlative level of spiritual attainment and renunciation. Hence, we propose that it is more appropriate to wear clothing suited to one's activities and social status, where from to inwardly turn to the Lord. End of quote. Srila Sarsavit Thakur downplayed the fuss over introduction of sannyas by putting it in perspective. The Vaishnava school does not attach much importance to this external formality of ascetic order, but considers it merely an ostentatious advantage for propaganda work. It is just attracting or seeking to attract attention. It's just a preaching device. 
Thus, although to facilitate his devotional service, a devotee may assume any situation within Varna and Ashrama, he identifies himself as a servant of Vishnu and the Vaishnavas and not with any temporal, a temporal position. Although ultimately beyond considerations such as cloth, length, or design of cloth, advanced Vaishnavas generally follow Shastriya regulations, scriptural regulations, meant for helping neophyte devotees and others recognize the position of a Vaishnava. But Vaishnavas are not bound by such secondary rules and may accept whatever dress is suitable for their service and outward station in society. Expressing this principle, Tila Sarsavi Thakur maintained the original spirit of Shastra and the Acharyas, whereas the Babajis mindlessly adhered to the outward form while lacking the essential spirit, as Tila Sarsavi Thakur rightly noted. Whether or not one dons a coffin, it is to be seen whether the Lord is being served. So, ironically, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasitaku made this remark. Similarly, to those who contend that adopting sannyas and other and making vigorous propaganda was a deviation from the line of Sri Rupa and the other Goswamis, whom they supposed had lived limpid lives of contemplation. Clear, simple, okay, absolutely serene and untroubled life of contemplation and meditation in Vrindavan. Hila Sarasvi Tagur responded that the Sikh Goswamis had been busy researching, writing books, and preparing disciples for preaching, and that the discipline and dynamism of the Gaudiya despite some differences in externals, were more akin, they were more similar to the monastic life of Sri Rup Sanatan than was the lifestyle of indolent Babajis. The lazy Babajis. This is simply a matter of uh, history. Uh, Jiva Goswami, uh, he even went and purchased land uh, for getting things done. It was managing. There are all kinds of things that was that were that they were doing. It's not that this is Goswami which should be sitting in one place and simply thinking. Nana Shastra Vicharana Ikanipu now. Uh, they did a lot of research. In fact, there is even evidence in Vrindavan Research Institute that Lord Chaitanya from Puri would keep sending uh, scriptural evidences for uh, Prabhupada Saraswati to give to the uh, Goswamis and so on. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of work going on. Lord Chaitanya sent Rup Sanatan for some important work, missionary work, not simply sitting in one place and just uh, meditating like the uh, Bhajanandis, they were Goshtiyanandis. At that particular point in time, preaching meant to write books. And Jiva Goswami also trained Narottam Shamananda Srinivas. Um, so you know, things were happening, many, many things were happening. It was a busy life. Even if those Babajis who actually practiced considerable Vairagya and Tyaga were thereby able to remain aloof from the gross materialism that otherwise would impede their bhajan. By their withdrawing from the world, they could hardly contribute positively to Mahaprabhu's mercy mission. In the past, numerous Vaishnava and Mayavadi sannyasis had moved about the world to disseminate their message and had been obliged to engage in doctrinal struggle. Hila Sasvi Thakur wanted to institute exactly that kind of sannyas. Men ready to sacrifice everything to fight for Krishna through Pridanda Sanyas. Shilabhakta Siddhanta Saraswati wanted to demonstrate the real standard of renunciation. Echoing Lord Chaitanya, he referred to the market vairagya, monkey like renunciation of lascivious Babajis. filled with or showing sexual desire, that's called lascivious, who smoked and consorted with women, as do many sadhus, monkeys live in forests, go naked and eat only fruit, but their main concern is to enjoy their dozens of female companions. Likewise, although known as Vairagis, various renegade Babajis, fake, renegade, an individual who rejects lawful behavior 
various renegade Babadris outwardly presented themselves as austere, but clandestinely, secretly, or even openly, had promiscuous connections with libertine women. So they, they had plenty of illicit relationships with very liberal women who, after having been banished from mainstream society, congregated in holy places. Many contemporary Babajis in Bengal, especially, especially in Navadhi, lived with Vaishnavis known as Seva Dasis, who were mostly premenopausal widows or rejected adulteresses. So this is this sort of liberal relationships uh, were going on. Um, all in the name of being advanced to Vaishnavism. Commonly such philanderers, such um, people who engage in illicit relationships and their concubines and their girlfriends, hailed from the lowest state of society and were notoriously uncultured. These Babaji's Seva Dasis and their adulterine offspring collectively comprised a despised subcaste known as Vostam. Thus the words Akhra, Akhra, monastery, Vairagi, pronunciate, Vaishnav, and Vaishnavi had become epithets, had become titles associated with fornication, sexual activity, and other odious activities, and other shameful activities far beyond the pale of respectable society. With few exceptions, Vaishnavas were considered untouchable, if not by birth, by their activities. In contrast, the Vairagya of Mayavadi sannyasis appeared substantial, for they were exceedingly strict and ascetic, but their rejection of the world was so sweepingly nirvishesha, so undiscriminating and unqualified as to encompass rejection of it's the world's essential relationship with Hari. Vairagya is meant to lead to Jnana, but the Mayavada portrayal of the absolute truth as attributeless, impersonal, was not Jnana, but, but habitation. Dull, dullness and ignorance born of envy. For he is bhajani gunascha anandascha nitya. He is worshipable due to being eternal, limitless, and characterized by all desirable qualities. That Mayavadis endeavored so arduously, endeavored so hard to attain a goal that they themselves insisted was insubstantial, had led Srila Rupa Goswami to dub their vairagya as falgu, feeble. Thus, another purpose of reintroducing Vaishnava sannyas was to challenge the Mayavadis, who absurdly challenged Bhagavan himself by declaring that merely by accepting sannyas, a man becomes equal to him. Danda grahana matrena naro narayano bhavet. A man can become narayana simply by accepting uh, the ekadanda, the uh, rod of sannyas, their unwillingness to serve Bhagavan and their desiring to take his position suggested that the Mayavadi's apparently considerable vairagya and kyaga was but the flip side of their suppressed desires for material enjoyment, scorning their narcissistic humbug, their nonsense talk because of self-obsession. Srila Sarsavit Nagur wanted to establish that sannyas is meant neither for self-aggrandizement, not meant to glorify oneself, nor self-denial, or to simply deny oneself, but for acknowledging one's position of unflinching servitorship to the Lord. Thus he reintroduced sannyas according to Srila Rupa Goswami's ideal of Yitavairagya, and to demonstrate and propagate such servitorship through the exemplary lives of individuals fully committed to it with no other responsibility or diversion. At some point before assuming sannyas, she, Siddhanta Saraswati, had under the guidance of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur donned, put on an upavita, brahman thread, in the manner of upper caste men. That in itself was revolutionary, for according to caste norms, according to caste conventions, Khayastas were disqualified from wearing such threads, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur belonged to the Khayasta caste. Furthermore, only born Brahmins 
those who are born in a Brahmin family were allowed to enter sannyas life, whereupon the Ekadandis relinquished to Pavit. <coughs> the Ekadandis are the Mayavadi sannyasis. They gave up uh, sannyas. In the Madhva line, also, you have something like uh, an Ekadanda sannyas. But uh, they are the fiercest opponents of Mayavadi. They consider sannyas to be absolute surrender to Lord Vishnu. That's the idea that we also have, absolute surrender to Radha Krishna. Vaishnava Babaji's from Brahman families also discarded their Upavita, uh, deeming it a symbol of caste pride. That Sri Siddhanta Saraswati, not from a Brahman family, retained the threat upon renunciation, sparked even more surprise and protest from persons ignorant of the different conceptions of renunciation represented by Mayavad Sanyas and Tridanda Sanyas. So they are even more surprised. First of all, he is not from a Brahmin family. And he is putting on a thread. And on top of it, he takes Sanyas. And he keeps the thread. In Tridandi Sanyas, in, in uh, the Sanyas where you keep uh, the three Dandas, uh, the Brahmin thread is also kept. Uh, Shikha is also kept. So they refer to it as keeping the Shikha Sutra. They keep the Shikha and the Sutra. Uh, sutra means the Brahman thread. So they, they keep these two. Tridanti Sanya is actually very uh, common in the scriptures. In Valmiki Ramayana, um, Ravana appears as a Tridanti Sanyasi. Uh, Hanuman takes the uh, appearance of a Tridanti Sanyasi uh, when he meets uh, Ramachandra and Lakshmana. So, Tridandi Sanyas is there in the scriptures. While donning, while putting on, while wearing red cloth, Tilavatu Siddhanta Saraswati <clears throat> kept his bead bag white, considering Jabba beads representative of the purely transcendental and thus, thus not to be colored with Varnashima designations. White signifying the purity of a transcendently situated Paramahamsa. His retaining of white bead bag indicated his actual position. That his outward change of dress to facilitate preaching did not diminish his unchangeable internal attitude of genuine attachment to the holy names and concomitant, and concomitant detachment and consequential detachment from anything material, such as the opportunity for self assertion in the name of sannyas. Besides, it indicated that he conceived of sannyas as more than a strategic adjustment for preaching. And that she will, uh, Siddhanta Saraswati later imparted to his sannyas disciples the esoteric Gopi Bhava mantra or Gaudiya renunciants given in Chila Gopal Vata Goswami Samskar Deepika suggested that above and beyond renunciation, Gaudiya sannyas is meant for embracing the mood of servanthood to the servants of Srimati Radha Rani. Uh, in Prabhupada's commentary to the first canto, Look at this. Uh, human society, okay. the four castes are the intelligent caste, the martial caste, the productive caste, and the laborer caste. These castes are classified in terms of one's work and qualification and not by birth. Then again, there are four orders of life, namely the student life, the householder's life, the retired life, and the devotional life. See, he's referring to sannyas as the devotional life. So that summarizes Bhakti Siddhanta Sarishpakur's idea of sannyas. Even though uh, one can be a devotee as a brahmachari, as a celibate student. One can be a devotee as a householder also, a dharmic householder. And as an austere vanaprastha also. Still, the type of sannyas that Bhakti Siddhanta Sarishyakur reintroduced from the scriptures was one in which you engage in devotion service and nothing but devotion service.
chapter 5. The seer and the seen. This is a topic from uh, the Upanishads. Drashta, the seer, and Drishya, the seen. Are we Drashta or Drishya? Are we the seers or are we the seen? Whatever I have to say, my whole message is based on proper comprehension of this truth. But how few people have really understood this Drishya, Vichar, this analysis of the seer and the seen? Showering tears. Srila Sarsi Thakur repeatedly spoke thus to Sri Pa Sundarananda Vidya Vinod while Sundarananda was preparing materials for Saraswati Thakur's biography. The topic of Drashta and Drishya is discussed in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and other Shastras. But Srila Vaktasiddhanta Saraswati clarified and stressed the point perhaps more than any previous Acharya. A bhogi, one who attempts to enjoy this world, considers himself Drashta, the seer and everything else, including the Supreme Lord, to be Drishya, his object of vision, Darshana. Due to their bitter experience of this world, so-called renouncers wish to deny the plurality of Drashta, Drishya, and Darshana, and thus regard them as one. Now, this is the ideal of the Mayavadis. Only devotees have the proper vision to appreciate that Krishna is a supreme enjoyer and alone is fully independent and no one's servant. But being drashta should be served by all for the divas and all else are all else that be are drishya, objects of his darshan. So the idea is that don't try to see God act in a way that God can see you. It is due to intellectual arrogance that we think that we are the ones who are discovering things in this world. In reality, we are, we are in fact the ones who are being studied by the Supreme Lord who is reciprocating with us. Chila Sarsuit Hagur often expounded Goloka Darshan, the perspective of Goloka versus Jagat Darshan, the perspective of the material world, spiritual vision versus worldly vision. By Goloka Darshan, Krishna is perceived as the center of existence and everything in this world as paraphernalia for serving him. By Jagat Darshan, the Jiva considers himself the center of existence and views everything, even the Godhead, as paraphernalia for his personal sense enjoyment. By Goloka Darshan, one sees and lives in the spiritual realm even while present in the mundane sphere. He who sees an object is called the seer. An object seen by the observer is called the seen. The instrument of seeing is called sight. It is a common error to deem the sense of sight the actual seer. Whatever we can measure by any of our senses, we also call a seeable object. And he who senses it is called the seer. It is best that the jiva see himself as the object of Krishna's enjoyment. Thinking himself the seer, he sees the world as the object of his enjoyment, but thinking himself the enjoyer under the influence of false ego will result only in his misfortune. It is not fitting that the jiva see the world as the object of his own enjoyment, rejecting that outlook, and instead seeing the world as the object of the Lord's enjoyment, seeing it as Krishna's world or Gokula is the jiva's good fortune and satisfies Krishna's senses. I am not the seer, but rather I am seen by Krishna. I am not the enjoyer but the object of enjoyment for Krishna. See, there are two features. Uh, one is, apart from eternity, on the platform of eternity, in spiritual variegated existence, in the Vaikuntha universe, there is Chit and there is Ananda. But a Chit refers to spiritual experience. Ananda refers to uh, the experience of enjoyment, happiness, uh, relishing. So one aspect is experience. Another is relishing. Uh, that, that is the aspect of perception. And that is the aspect of 
tasting aswadan now we may develop an abhiman in both areas we may develop a false pride in both areas we may think i am the one who is meant to enjoy or we may think i am the one who actually knows reality so drigdrshya uh, vichar or uh, the analysis of the seer and the seen uh, strikes at the very root there is another reason why um, this point is brought up by dr siddhant saraswati elsewhere he points out that there are three features in spiritual life he often in different articles in the gaudiya weekly in bengali to bring out these points there are the three aspects which are achar prachar achar means understanding achar means conduct prachar means propaganda so now if there is a defect in understanding there will be a defect in conduct and there will be a defect in propaganda uh sadosha vichar defective understanding will lead to sadosha achar and sadosha prachar it will lead to defective conduct defective propaganda on the other hand spotless vichar nirdosha vichar will lead to nirdosha achar spotless conduct and it will lead to nirdosha prachar spotless propaganda but the starting point is always understanding if we make a mistake here then we'll make a mistake here now why do we think that this world is meant for our enjoyment because we think that we are the ones um we individually are the most important entities in existence i am the one who is discovering things so therefore i have the right to enjoy so therefore this drig uh, drishya vita the analysis of the seer and the seen strikes at the very root of this misconception the enjoyers of this world think themselves seers and the renunciants in counter to the bitterness they have experienced in the world ultimately conclude that the seer and enjoyer are nirvishesha devoid of characteristics but although it is inauspicious for the jeeva to think himself the enjoyer and seer it is even more inauspicious for the jeeva to attempt suicide by killing the enjoyer and seer thinking them to be a hangman's rope around the neck the best path is to see oneself as the object of enjoyment of and object of seeing by the supreme enjoyer and seer so we are just subordinate seers in fact we are meant to be seen by him we are subordinate enjoyers in fact we are meant to be in krishna's enjoyed we are not even meant to be uh, uh an enjoyer with him on an equal platform it is not that we come up with the idea okay krishna you enjoy i will also enjoy and you be happy i also be happy no 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 we exist to make him happy without trying to make ourselves happy or without insisting that krishna should make us happy that is the purpose of our existence hirna kashipu thought he was a seer of the pillar in his hall and desired to observe the existence of vishnu or to measure vishnu and adjudging himself the enjoyer perceived pralad as a son the object of his enjoyment but the lord of inconceivable powers revealed his inconceivable eternal form to hirna kashipu and destroyed that seer and was very merciful to pralad who regarded himself as the object to be seen or enjoyed by vishnu end of quote this precise and unequivocal assertment of the position of the jiva and stressing this point as the essential foundation of bhakti was the unique contribution to shila contribution that shila saraswati thakur tried to inculcate in his disciples and the general public the extent to which individuals religions and sampradayas recognized acquiesced to accepted and lived by it was in shila saraswati thakur's estimation 
the litmus test of their genuineness, sincerity, and advancement in bhakti, being divisive and certainly unpalatable to committed worldly sense enjoy enjoyers and advocates of a plurality of viewpoints. This ontological teaching gave definition to the Gaudiya Math as being not simply another religious organization, nor one characterized merely by high moral standards, but as philosophically distinct from other religious parts and even from other Vaishnava Sampradayas and Gaudiya subsects, and from Gaudiyas and others who quoted Shastra, but had not grasped this essential point by which Shastra is to be accepted. Whether or not their position has strength, all have the right to speak and make personal judgments. But giving up openness to different angles of vision and debate, everyone should instead come to, toward, that, to, toward the truth and see things as they really are. Drishya, Darshana, and Drashta. Sambandha, Vijaya, and Prayojana. All these subjects should be considered. These topics could not be exhausted even after topping, uh, talking on them day and night for five or 10 days. This Dhridrishya Vichar was particularly a rebuttal to the Mayavadi theory of Triputi Vinash, which proposes that spiritual perfection lies in the Vinash, destruction of the Triputi, three factors, namely between Jnana, knowledge, Jaya, the object of knowledge, and Jyata, the knower, with all merging into oneness. These divisions parallel Drishya, Darshana, and Drashta, which Mayavadis also intend to amalgamate. Yet Vaishnava Acharyas have demonstrated that such homo homogenization being impossible, the goal of Mayavadis was even more illusory than their conception of the hypothetically illusory world they attempted to escape, and that the much tutored Mayavad, the much glorified Mayavad, was thus an elaborate logical fallacy while purporting to explain, while claiming to explain the meaning of existence, it is ultimately meaningless and thus a stupendous hoax and a crime against God and humanity. Those who are very interested in, in understanding this should read the Siddhanta Ratna of Baladevi Devotion. The practical application of Dhridrishya Vichar was brought out in Shri Sarsvati Thakur's comments on Sri Chaitanya Chattamrita. 3.20.52, a devotee does not care about his own happiness and distress. He is interested only in seeing that Krishna is happy. And for that purpose, he undertakes various activities. A pure devotee has no way of sensing pleasure except by seeing that Krishna is satisfied in every respect. If Krishna becomes happy by giving him distress, such a devotee accepts that distress as the greatest pleasure. End of quote. Hilabhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was himself the exemplar of this ideal, insistently serving Krishna without desiring anything in return and disregarding whatever could have been construed as his own physical or mental happiness. Quote, those who are materialistic, who are very proud of worldly wealth and have no spiritual knowledge, consider their own happiness, the aim of life, as to the Prakrita Sahajiyas. Some aspire to enjoy themselves by sharing the happiness of Krishna. So some want to uh, they want some kind of contract with Krishna. Will you be happy? I also be happy. You are spiritually happy? I also want to be spiritually happy. But in Prema Bhakti, we don't have this consideration. In Prema Bhakti, the devotees only want to make Krishna happy. There is one statement. Uh, let me see if I can trace it. Padhyavali. A compilation from Rupa Goswami. Uh, where is it? Let's see if I can trace it. Thank you. 
not able to trace it. But there is a statement where um, there's a prayer that whether the Supreme Lord gives me the prosperity of Vaikuntha or whether he drowns me in, uh, in the threefold distresses of material existence, I still want to make, I still want to serve Krishna and make him happy. This is Goloka Darshan. On the other hand, some aspire to enjoy themselves by sharing the happiness of Krishna. This is the mentality of fruity workers who want to enjoy sense gratification by making a show of service to Krishna. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati described Padma Niti, the policy of Padma, Kamsa's mother. In payment for herding his cows, Nanda gives Krishna a little milk and butter to eat. If Nanda were shown the account of the value of the milk and butter against the amount of work that Krishna does, he would definitely give up Krishna. Having, calc having the calculating mentality of a merchant, Padma cannot understand how guileless love, how in guileless love, devotees dedicate all their activities to Bhagavan. Guileless. Straightforward, innocent. In an innocent manner, we want to serve Krishna with no consideration of what, how Krishna is privileging. Non-devotees cannot comprehend how devotees give their all to Krishna and how Krishna is more dear to Nanda than his very life. Therefore, non-devotees resort to Padma Niti, the policy of Padma, for conducting mercantile exchanges, for conducting commercial exchanges with Bhagavan. So I will do all these things for you. You do this for me. End of quote. Similarly, Srila Saraswati Thakur often gave the example of Ravana stealing Maya Sita, citing the statement, Aprakrita vastu no hai, prakrita gocha. Spiritual phenomena are never within the jurisdiction of material intellection, within the jurisdiction of the material intelligence. This Ravana's attempt to steal Sita uh, is very interesting. First of all, Ravana put on, he disguised himself as a Tridandi sannyasi in order to come and, and uh, uh, he wanted to cheat. Uh, he did all kinds of things. He, he um, worked it out as a plan with Maricha. He made Maricha uh, you know, change his form into the form of an astonishing golden deer. And he sent with the view of cheating Sita Ram Lakshman in order to steal Sita. But you cannot steal the Supreme Lord. Even before you can conceive of that plan, the Lord understands your plan. Uh, so then the Lord has a counter plan, which is greater than this plan. So uh, Ram and Lakshman pretend to go through the various motions of it and they, they are so dramatic that it is so believable also. Then Ram goes away, then Sita Devi, uh, what she does is she uh, replaces herself with a duplicate uh, Sita, Maya Sita. So Sita goes ultimately to the to Kailasa in order to be the object of service of mm. Uma Maheshwara, Parvati and Shiva. Mm. So then uh, this duplicate Sita is the one that uh, Ravana has kidnapped. So when you try to steal, when you try to cheat the Supreme Lord, you should understand that the Supreme Lord has already worked out a plan of counter-cheating you beyond your ability. He would say, Bhakti Siddhanta Sajikagur would say, if we make a show of living in Navadip Dham, we do not live there at all. If we pretend to approach a guru and receive diksha and shiksha, then actually we do not go near or even see him. We are like bugs and mosquitoes on a sadhu that can neither see nor touch the spiritual substance of his transcendental body. Sarsvet Hagur always uttered words like Adhyak Shika and Adhyak Shikata. Adhyak Shika. Empiric. Uh, empiric means coming to conclusions only on the basis of our own sense perception. And Adhyak Shikata empiricism. The philosophy that to understand reality, you should depend on whatever you perceive through your 
princess. So the Sasuri Thakur always uttered words like Adhyakshika, empiric, and Adhyakshika Ta, empiricism, with an air of distaste, and repeatedly decried empiricists' attempts to extend their mensural proclivity, their proclivity to measure to the unlimited and hence immeasurable transcendental personality of God. Galileo's utterance, measure what is measurable and make measurable what is not, had ushered in the empirical ethos typifying that era. But Shila Saraswati Thakur regarded such enlightened thinking as mere illusion. He would cite, Miyate Anaya Iti Maya. Maya is the means of of measurement. That through which you measure is known as Maya. And he untiringly explained the import of words like Adhokshaja and Aprakrita. Adhokshaja. Adhokshaja. Adhokshaja means uh, he who is perpetually above the range of our sense perception. This also includes the mind because the mind can only think within uh, the experience of our sense perception. To the many who came to Srila Saraswati Thakur with the premature and immature hope that he would show them God, he would reply, don't try to see God, but try to act in such a way that he will want to see you. A Gaudi article entitled Benu Ubapu clarified. One who asks a guru to show him Bhagavan can never really be attracted to the sweetness of Krishna's flute from which all Vani emanates. But those who genuinely want to serve the form of Godhead request a guru. By your instructions, please correct and purify me and give me eyes by which I may actually see. Godhead must be seen first through the ears, first Vani, then Vapi. The ears prepare the eyes. So, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati did not deny the importance of the quest to see God. Rather, he underscored its importance, stating that to behold the beauty of Shishi Radha Krishna's toenails is the only proper utility of the eyes. Yet he stressed that the only possible means to achieve such darshan is to develop a service attitude, which itself is tantamount to seeing God. That service attitude is as good as seeing God because it will, if you simply continue uh, maintaining a proper service attitude that pleases Krishna, certainly Krishna will reveal himself. It is necessary to seek the sight of Krishna. That should be our first and only endeavor. Our souls can have no real function till we are face to face with the divinity. Shri Krishna shows himself to those who prefer his service to any other occupation. Seeing Bhagavan means total engagement of the senses in his service. In other words, Serving the Lord 24 hours a day with all one's senses means being, esta being established in one's primal constitutional position in which one naturally sees Bhagavan by the Guru's mercy and strength gained from personal bhajan, bhajana kriya. One becomes fully aware of Krishna's manifestation, both internally and externally. This is seeing Bhagavan in a lecture on 10 November 1936 in Puri, Tilavakta Siddhanta Saraswati emphasized the type of faith required to approach the Supreme Lord. I see the statue. This kind of thinking is in the spirit of enjoyment. Whereas the deity sees me, my uncovered pure self, is deity darshan. If in the same way that I see a movie, drama, or gymnastic display, or hear a song, I think, I can see the deity with my eyes and fathom him by my intelligence, such an attempt will be on the material platform. One will derive no benefit from such inclinations, not meant for satisfying the Lord's senses. Faith in the Lord entails not having faith in mundane enjoyment or renunciation. If one has faith in this world, then that is bhoga, enjoyment. The objects of the world are for my enjoyment. Such a mentality is due to not having initiation and spiritual knowledge. Worldly people are completely different from devotees. Difficulties occur when one thinks that he who is to be served should serve oneself. Oh Lord, take notice of me. I'm coming to collect dues from you in the form of dharma, the karma, moksha for sense gratification. Hiding this inner intention 
person say Jagannatha Swami Nayanabhathagami Bhavutume, the Lord of the Universe be visible to me, and other such delirious Karmakandiya words, speaks other Karmakandiya words, which have actually come out of delusion. This is not Bhakti. I went and saw the holy place. I went and saw the tree. I went and saw Jagannath. I went and saw the sadhu. Bestowing on them a degree, I have dismissed them and come here. So I went and saw and I blessed all of these people. All of this is a matter of enjoyment and hence cannot at all be called service. If the consideration of who am I has not entered the heart and in Sambandha Gyan concerning my eternal object of worship never arises. And how will Shraddha and Sharanagati develop? Shraddha and Sharanagati develop only with Sambandha Gyan. Without faith, one cannot have darshan of the Lord or his devotee. Instead, malice and envy will appear. Why envy? One will become envious when another person rises higher than himself. In the opening of Bhagavatam, Bhagavata Dharma is called the Dharma of those sadhus who are without envy. All humanity is carrying around only with the concept of dharma the kama moksha. So they've made this as their career. Some are seeking artha kama, some are seeking dharma, and some are seeking moksha. But the means for attaining such goals are not given in the Bhagavata. Therein, one finds only discussion of devotion to the Lord meant for his dedicated devotees. If I become slack in this understanding, I will waste my time in material knowledge derived from the senses. If the consciousness of serving awakens, rather than considering oneself the object of service, one can slash all the wickedness imbibed from father, mother, and mundane relatives. Forgetting that the Lord is the enjoyer, one enters samsara, material existence. Samsara in Bengali also refers to family life. She is called Durga Devi, who as the shadow energy of the Lord disturbs us makes us fools and entrances us, captivates us with dharma artha kama moksha. By the Lord's will, she does dazes us. By accepting the shelter of this shadow energy, there can be no good fortune. One must take shelter of the possessor of that energy. This divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Sarvadharman parityat jama metam sharanam raja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshe shyami ma shucha abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Persons absorbed in service to the Lord destroy their samsara. That means they destroy their engagement in material existence. Whereas those disinclined to serve the Lord increase their samsara. That means they increase their engagement in material existence. Those who drift in this world have no time for hearing about service to the Lord. Even if they make a pretense of hearing, they do so according to their own viewpoint. If they do not like what they hear, they reject it outright. They do not give priority to the topic of the Lord's service. They think that their present day needs are more pressing. They consider it better for an intelligent person to spend his time hearing mundane poetry. What right do we have to accept service from others? But in spite of that, we think, let the whole universe serve me. And I use the river water and fruit from the tree, um, but have no connection with the law. So in other words, I will take water from the river and fruit from the tree, but what God has to do with my life? If one wants to know about the Lord, he must approach a devotee of the Lord. One cannot bypass the proper channel. Ordinary persons and Kanishta Adhikaris cannot comprehend who is serving the Lord and who is not. Rather, they have the inclination to oppose those who serve the Lord because the service attitude and behavior of a devotee does not mix well with worldly so-called moral or immoral conduct. Materialists disparage, criticize devotees of the Lord, understanding that they are not instruments for the materialist satisfaction and pleasure. In another lecture, so that was the end of a quote. Another lecture, quote, those with contaminated intentions cannot worship the transcendent Lord. 
their entire way of thinking is quite different from that of the pure hearted the contamination is desire for dharma the kama moksha those who buy a ticket of dharma the kama moksha do not buy a ticket to the terminal station of prema they revolve throughout the universe or otherwise accept impersonalistic suicide as the ultimate aim even if they do buy a ticket of prema they break journey in the middle seeing the objects attainable through dharma the kama moksha they try to attain them end of quote so sir so we talk about demonstrated drug drishya vichar when at shri chaitanya mat mayapur he was once standing at the doorway of the inner sanctum looking toward the deities of shri shri guru gauranga gandhar vita giridhari since shri sasu thakur was not wearing his spectacles an accompanying disciple suggested that perhaps he was unable to properly see the deities shri sasu thakur smiled and said we should not think of the supreme lord as an object of our vision instead we should meditate on how we can acquire some qualification to become worthy objects of his vision we should consider whether he wants to see us and reveal himself to us following the example of lord chaitanya shri bhakta siddhanta saraswati took darshan of jagannath in puri from a distance from behind the garuda stambha at the entrance to the temple he explained we will stand behind our guru garuda jagannath will look at garuda because garuda is his devotee then he will also cast his merciful glance upon us after once taking darshan in this way shri bhakta siddhanta saraswati expounded jagannath is, is not drishya jagannath is not meant to be seen but drashta he is the seer only when a jeeva who is wholly free from the conception of himself as being drashta the seer and when he is fully situated in the understanding of himself as drishya the scene of jagannath and to be enjoyed by him then only can the jeeva remain sevon mukha sevon mukha favorable to the service of the lord and with eyes of love actually have darshan of jagannath as long as we think i shall see jagannath then we shall not see him but only wood stone an object described in buddhist literature or an antique handless statue that is an object of our enjoyment eyes of flesh can never chalk out the sachidananda vigraha only persons who realize themselves as drishya the seen whose eyes see by hearing from shastra or by chanting the holy names may have darshan of the sachidananda reality and of course on another occasion but one who sees but must do so with bhakti pure devotee is a servant of bhagwan and non devotees are those with extraneous desires karmis gyanis yogis and the rest and the rest refers to uh, anya vilashis uh, sinful people adharmic people if in the mood of an enjoyer we go to see jagannath regarding him as an object of our enjoyment then we will simply see a maimed wooden doll a broken wooden doll and return some will say jagannath is amless ram a wooden doll others consider him a wooden mannequin with spirit inside consider him to be uh, a mannequin is um you know when you go to some shops uh where they sell dress they have some figures on which they put some dress so that uh, that figure that statue that is called a mannequin Now others consider him a wooden mannequin with spirit inside end of quote when a devotee requested of shila bhakta siddhanta saraswati be merciful to me i want to see bhagwan in this life he was reproved he was criticized will you see bhagwan or will bhagwan see you for your own satisfaction you want to see bhagwan this is not the correct attitude thus again insinuating thus again critically indicating but simply an impression on the retina is not sufficient for seeing the supreme lord to actually see him one must serve the guru and be awarded divine vision as shila bhakta siddhanta saraswati insisted the path to see god is by service inclined subservience to the guru who is a transparent representative of the parampara and by waiting for and expecting the mercy of krishna now bhakti siddhanta saraswati whenever he speaks about a guru like this 
He is talking about the Uttama Vaishnava, the first class devotee. This is a standard explanation. Chala Sarsavi Thakur emphasized that hearing from devotees is more important than independently reading Shastra or attempting to see the Lord directly. He would cite Shutek Shitapataha, the process of seeing by hearing, and explain the vision of Krishna can be attained only through the medium of the ear by hearing Harikatha from pure Vaishnavas. Uh, wait. Shutek Shitapataha from Bhagavatam. Uh, sorry. 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 Yad yad dhyat urgaya vibhavayanti tattan papuh pranayase saddhanugrahaya. Oh my Lord, your devotees can see you through the years by the process of bona fide hearing. And thus their hearts become cleansed and you take your seat there. You are so merciful to your devotees that you manifest yourself in the particular eternal form of transcendence in which they always think of you. Here, Shutek Shtapatha. They can see you through the years by the process of bona fide hearing. So he uh, is the pathway that is seen through the ear. When a man told him, while sitting on the riverside yesterday, I saw Krishna. Shiva Sarsavi Thakur asked him, did you not also see Maya? If you are still seeing Maya, it means you did not see Krishna. You must have seen some, you must have seen a ghost. The test of seeing Krishna is to no longer be interested in Maya. Anyone can say he has seen Krishna, but Rupa Goswami says, Smeram Bhangitraya Parichitam Sachi Vistirna Drishtim Vamshi Nyasta Dharakishalayam Udvalam Chandra Kena Govindakyam Haritanamita Keshitirtu Pakante Ma Prekshishtha Ma Prekshishtha Stava Yadi Sake Bandhu Sanghesti Ranga Dr. Samasindhu, another famous voice. My dear friend, if you're attached to your worldly friends, do not look at the smiling face of Govinda as he stands on the bank of the Yamuna at Keshiga. Casting sidelong glances, he places his flute to his freshly blossoming lips. His transcendental body bending in three places appears very bright in the moonlight. So if you're still attached to Maya, you could not have seen Govinda. For you, for if you had really seen Govinda, you could no longer remain attached to Maya. A Zamindar who was granted a private meeting with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati sat close to him and earnestly whispered, Have you seen Bhagavan? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati retorted, What is the use if I say I have or haven't seen him? As long as you do not know how to see Godhead, any statement about my seeing him cannot benefit you. You must learn how to see Godhead. Otherwise, anyone can tell you that he has seen the Supreme Lord and you will be hoodwinked. The Samandar was not satisfied with this reply and repeatedly asked, Have you seen? Have you seen? Bhakshila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati stuck to his point without knowing who is the Supreme and the authorized process for seeing him. Any such declaration, I have seen God, will only serve to deceive you. Pursuant to this point, he once explained that without lacerating, without cutting off, all kudarshana, wrong philosophies by sudarshan, correct philosophy. No one can attain Bhagavad darshan, audience of Bhagavan. So it's not just a matter of, you know, I have seen God, you have seen God, and all that. First of all, you have to know of the procedure to verify who has seen God, who has not seen God. And there are symptoms, invariable symptoms of those who have attained Bhagavad Bhakti which even those persons cannot hide, nor can those symptoms be faked. Shortly after disclosing Gayatri Mantras to some disciples, from within his room, Sri Sarsavi Thakur overheard them conferring about the meaning of Kama Gayatri, discussing with alacrity the possibility of throwing flowers on Krishna's body.
cheerfully ready to the possibility that they can throw flowers on Krishna's body. When at that time, Shrimad Sridhar Maharaj entered his Gurudev's room, Srila Sasuri Thakur looked up with a deeply disappointed expression and gravely remarked that it is most difficult to throw a flower on Krishna. Srimad Sridhar Maharaj deduced his Guru Maharaj's inner feelings. For crores of lives, I've been trying to cast a flower upon Krishna's body, yet I'm still unable. But new initiates are glibly planning. They are informally, easily, without without any substance, they are making plans on how to throw flowers on Krishna. After devoting life after life, after untold trials, I'm still unable to approach that point. Yet you greenhorns, neophytes, inexperienced, naive persons, think that because you have now received the mantra, you have achieved everything. It is not such an easy thing like a sweet meat to be taken and swallowed. One day, while Srila Vakrasitana Saraswati was lecturing, the deity's arati began and some listeners left to attend him. He commented, they are going simply for eye exercise, thereby indicating that the Lord cannot truly be discerned, cannot be perceived by those who have not properly heard. And in Puri, he commented similarly to a disciple who, having gone for darshan of Jagannath, arrived at the end of his katha, the Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati's lecture in the Mat, a lecture in which he had expounded on the actual meaning of Jagannath darshan. Even now you are very late. Even now you are wandering here and there going to see Jagannath through these eyes. If you do not first attain spiritual knowledge through the years, then going to see Jagannath will simply be curiosity mixed with personal sense gratification. I'm not saying not to go to the temple to see Jagannath, but Jagannath will see. The pretense of darshan by a person lacking an object, ob objective is no darshan at all. See Jagannath as the object of service. different from the world of personal enjoyment. When you go to see Jagannath, do not just see the material world, but attain spiritual knowledge. End of quote. The Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati applied this Drishya Vichar, the analysis of the seer and the seen, not only to Bhagawan, but also to those pure devotees who constantly see him, Bhagawan, through eyes tinged with the salve of love. Like their worshipable Lord, such pure devotees cannot actually be observed or their activities factually comprehended by worldly perception. Thus he taught, do not try to behold a sadhu by the ears, but by the ears, by the eyes. Do not try to behold a sadhu by the eyes, but by the ears, by hearing him. One day a renowned professor came to the Gaudiya printing works to meet Srila Saraswati Thakur, who was sitting there expounding Harikatha to his disciples. In course of conversation, the professor related that he had recited the Gita before Bhaktivinoda Thakur and was well acquainted with him and some of his children. Srila Saraswati Thakur immediately retorted. Immediately he critically responded, you never saw Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. You were never in his presence. The shocked professor replied, for so many years I discoursed to him at Ram Bhagan. I gave lectures to Bhaktivinoda you know, at Ram Bhagan. That's, that's a place where Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur's Bhakti Bhavan was. And you're not accepting this? I'm elder to you. I even know all of Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur's children. The Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati became aroused and manifesting his intrinsic nature as the line Acharya. Far from reciting the Gita to Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur. Reciting the Gita means, you know, giving lectures on the Gita. Far from giving lectures on the Gita to Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur. You were never able to see him. No mere professor can see Srila Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur. In our conception, Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur had no children. He was not a product of this material world. Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur keeps himself hidden from those who think they are seeing him. Bhaktivinoda Thakur reveals himself to one who understands that he is to be seen by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. The scholar was dumbstruck by the stinging analysis and could not grasp its deep import. Upon leaving, 
He commented to Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, never did I go to Bhakti Vinod Thakur, never did I see him. My opinion is different from your proud words. He had some affection for me and never let me leave without feeding me. He, saw, he said many confidential things to me. You sometimes saw that yourself. I'm extremely aggrieved on hearing such unpleasant words from a sadhu like you. Not concerned that such a reputed and learned person was living in a huff, living in a hurry. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati remained unhesitant in speaking the truth and further declared, as long as you have such mundane vision, you cannot see Shila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Become fixed in seeing yourself as the object of his sight. The idea is that Bhakti Vinod Thakur is not some flesh and bones. During a Gaudiya Math festival, a Shastri, a very learned person, known for being fond of good food, was sitting for prasad. While he was relishing the opulence we call Malpua, Ananda Vasudev Prabhu addressed him, O Shastri, consider whether you are eating Malpua or the Malpua is eating you. Pandit hoya kene na Being a scholar, why don't you judge the matter? Why don't you consider this matter? To maintain proper consciousness while taking prasad, Vaishnavas say, sadhu saudhan, uh, sadhus, be attentive and recite the song of Bhakti Vinod. Not catching Vasudeva Prabhu's point, the Shastri became, became annoyed and on returning to his place, wrote an extensive letter to Shila Saraswati Thakur. I went to the festival at the Mutt, yet while taking prasad, I became disturbed at heart. I'm not a poor man. I'm getting a pension from the government. My two sons are earning well. My wife is most expert at preparing delicious varieties of food. I've eaten plenty of Malpua. I did not come to the much to gorge on Malpua. But your disciple Ananta Vasudev said to me, are you eating the Malpua or is the Malpua eating you? Hearing that, I became doleful. I became very unhappy. I became full of grief. Am I so greedy that the Malpua would eat me? End of quote. On reading this, Shri Saraswati Thakur commented to his disciples in attendance, can the learned people of this world comprehend Vasudeva's question? Even among us, are there more than a few persons who can, who can grasp it? It is not within the ability of humankind to appreciate these matters. Only by Krishna's mercy can all this be realized. A reply was sent to the Shastri conveying the real meaning of Vasudeva Prabhu's words. Quote, it is not fitting that we eat the prasad of the Lord. That is, we measure, that is, that we measure it. If the prasad enjoys us, eats us, makes us its own, then we will conquer over matter and that will be to our benefit. The meaning of prasad is favor or mercy. The remnants of a Vaishnava's prasad is called Mahamaha Prasad. The Bhagavatam states, Vayopabhukta Sraggandha Vasolankara Charchita Uchishta Bhojino Dasas Tavam Mayam Jayemahi Uddhava Udhavas saying this, simply by decorating ourselves with the garlands, fragrant oils, clothes and ornaments that you have already enjoyed and by eating the remnants of your meals, we, your servants, will conquer your illusory energy. One should consider oneself the object of vision or enjoyment or the prasad of the Lord or his devotee. To think oneself the seer and enjoy you will cause one to enter deeper within the kingdom of Maya. Brahmavan nirvikaram hi yatha. Vishnu Prasad is as transcendental and free from degrading transformation as is Vishnu himself. End of quote. Everything about Shila Saswit Thakur is to be understood in terms of this Drik Drishya Vichar, analysis of the seer and the seen. Without understanding this, nothing about him can be understood. His Drik Drishya Vichar, analysis of the seer and the seen, distinguishes him and all other authentic devotees from persons whose professed faith in God is motivated by personal intent, by this yardstick, which subsumes all flickers of truth found in other religious processes and reveals their insufficiency. Whatever else is called sincerity is exposed as a mere shadow of another creative sincerity. Only those who have been blessed with this drit drishya vichar, analysis of the seer and the seen, by the genuine desire to attain it, can begin to comprehend anything about the personality and teachings of Srila Saraswati Thakur. Others will necessarily, necessarily blame him for the faults they ascribe to him due to their own refracted vision, due to their own defective vision.
distorted vision. Okay, transcendental morality. Uh, let me just note it down. Okay, just give me a minute. Let me first of all look at the chat box. What were the five forbidden acts in Kali Yuga? Uh, Ashwamedam, Gavalambham, Sanyasam, Palapaitrakam, Devarayana, Sutot, Patim, Kalo, Pancha, Vivar, Jayet. These are five. Let me bring it up. In this age of Kali, five acts are forbidden. The offering of a ho uh, horse in sacrifice, the offering of a cow in sacrifice, the acceptance of the order of sannyas, the offering of oblations of flesh to the forefathers, and the man's begetting children and his brother's wife. It's from Brahma Yata Purana, Krishna Janma Khanda. I've actually seen this verse. For some reason, I had to look at Brahma Yata Purana when I found this. It's in the section called Kali Varjya. Uh, things to be avoided in Kali Yuga. Um, uh, just, okay. okay. Subhadra Mate. Thank you, Prabhu. You have. Okay. Uh, um, so this and is the one. Okay. Anything else? Flesh to forefathers? I can't understand. Yeah, prior to Kali Yuga, there were uh, Shraddha offerings. There's something, there's some, uh, something called Shraddha. Shraddha is a very important function within Karma Kanda for forefathers. And at that time, uh, there were certain types of uh, meat which could uh, which which one is allowed to cook. So that is prior to Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga that is forbidden. Okay, thank you, Prabhuji. Okay, anything else from anyone else? Prabhu, uh, this is Krishna. My name is Krishna Chandra. Yes, sir. Yeah, they were saying that uh, Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Thakur used a red attire. Is that not saffron or red, Prabhu? Saffron. Meaning, Rakta refers to all shades of red. Saffron is also a shade of red. So that means to say initially they were using red, Prabhu? Uh, I mean, red. Uh, uh, no, saffron itself is a shade of red. Okay, okay, okay. A shade of red. Uh, that's number one. Number two, I'm still confused with the word seer and seen, Prabhu. Could you just, uh, because if you look at the English dictionary. Seer is the one who's seen. Okay. Just simple English. Yeah. Seer is the one who's seen. Seen means the object of sight. Yeah. I look at this pen. Yeah. I'm the seer. Yeah. This is the seen. Okay. 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 So, in Sanskrit, it is drashta and drishya. 
and sight is the process of seeing and in sanskrit that is darshana drishti thank you prof anything else from anyone uh hari krishna prabhu yes ma'am prabhu uh, where uh, uh, we were reading about the three sticks uh, it's mentioned that uh, ashila bhakti is uh, siddhan saraswati thakur added another stick to symbolize the jipa and at the top of the danda placed a small curved stick symbolizing an axe for cutting non devotional theories can you just explain that how what what does that mean what is, what does that mean means what what it because the, it says three dandas and then he added one more stick it's to symbolize a, the jiva so that uh, makes it four sticks no it's not a complete stick it's just a small little twig a small little okay. twig and, that's all okay and and that is the one which has the hook is it it's the same thing yeah that is uh, tie, that ties it it's at the top of the sanyas danda okay so that uh, what symbolizes the jiva and that curved stick are the same thing it's not they are not two different things yeah the jiva should offer himself as well as his body and his mind and his words not that he offers his body and mind and words and he doesn't offer himself oh, okay okay right 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 symbolic okay okay no hari krishna prabhu ji thank thank you Yes, Prabhuji, I still don't understand. Um, like Prashadam enjoying us, that I can't understand. I I can't understand. Prashadam is a manifestation of Lord Krishna. We are oh, supposed to serve Prashadam. We are not supposed to enjoy Prashadam. Okay, we I can to, understand. We go just like we go to the deities. Yeah. Uh, the idea is not that I. do it for my visual enjoyment okay the service generally when we think of enjoyment we think of enjoying through the working senses you know there are karma indriyas and gyan indriyas and antar indriyas 11 senses there are five working senses five knowledge acquiring senses and there is the mind the internal sense which coordinates all of this so generally when we think of enjoyment we think of uh doing activities by which we can make ourselves happy through the uh karma indriyas through the working senses but of this is on the service for it goes further we also try to enjoy through the gyan indriyas and that's a fact you know we watch particular things that are pleasing to the eyes we hear things which are pleasing to the ears so that's also another attempt to, to enjoy and what this is on the service to occur because he only presence the highest he is like sugadev goswami only presence the highest either like it or lump it that's it whereas uh, acharyas like bhakti vinod thakur they were always thinking what do we do to prepare people for the highest now we require both just like vyasadev he himself prepares people to come to the point but at the same time he is very delighted to uh, have his uh, to to see his son speak nothing but the highest that's a pleasure in that so bhakti siddhanta saraswati throughout his life you can see that particular facet of krishna consciousness it's the highest and nothing but that uncompromised it is sweet it has its own just like sugadev goswami absolutely uncompromising it has its own sweetness even if we cannot handle the standards given by sugadev goswami still it is very attractive so what this is on saraswati is like that you know for him even when you try to see the dt uh, as a means of visual enjoyment he considers that unacceptable no you are not supposed to you are supposed to see krishna in such a manner that krishna is happy with you so this is a very very high standard yeah it is pure devotion so pure in the absolute sense you know yeah. kind of very very difficult to um, implement instantly in our personal life mm. but the, these thing one thing is uh, all of this should be accepted as the ultimate goals or milestones at least and if we don't know what the goal is you know we should be driving we driving 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 what is this you must have a google map you should know this is the goal this is the goal 
Now, where you are in that map, that's your choice. But this is a good. So, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, from him we learned that. That even something as simple as taking Krishna Prasadam, even there he puts his uh, analysis and he says, no, even taking Krishna Prasadam, you have to do it in a manner that is pleasing to Krishna. In his personal dealings also, I think we, I don't know whether we came across it, but we'll come across it if we have not yet come across it. Uh, for his own Mahaprasad remnants, uh, he would instruct his servant to mix up all the different items of prasadam, irrespective of their taste, and then uh, distribute it to whoever is asking for it. So this is something, you're not supposed to enjoy prasadam. You cannot, and specifically would ask, is anyone looking for sweet? Tell me their names. So, all guns blazing. Okay, I try to understand. I have to think about it. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, yeah, Prabhu, I just, uh, I mean, regarding prashadam, I mean, I've understood. So at this stage, how should we perceive or how should we understand when we partake prashad? Uh, generally, devotees enjoy taking prashad. Uh, that means to say, uh, how do we now? See, when we talk about even the English word enjoy, hmm. We derive happiness from something and we refer to that activity as enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Then there is also performing activities with the intention to derive happiness from it. That also we refer to as enjoyment. So when Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsitakur tells us that don't try to enjoy prasadam, it means don't try to do it with the desire to find happiness from that. Now, we certainly when we come in contact with Krishna, you're happy. That is there. But even in Goloka Vrindavan, Krishna's associates, they want to serve Krishna. They know that by serving Krishna, you become happy. They know that. But they are not interested in that happiness. They are not interested in that. They are not only disinterested in material happiness. They are not interested in impersonal liberation, the happiness of impersonal liberation. They are not interested even in the happiness of personal liberation. They are not really, they are selflessly interested in making Krishna happy. Selflessly, even in the spiritual sense, not just materially selfless, even spiritually selfless. So that is the point he is underscoring. That we need, that is the standard. He is basically stating that if you want to attain the perfection of sadhana bhakti, you will know, have to come to that point. Which uh, further indicates to me that we need to progress step by step towards that in a realistic manner and pray to Krishna for the eligibility in order to come to that point. Seva yadhi kara diye koro nija dasi. We don't say koro nija dasi. We say no, seva yadhi kara diye koro nija dasi. Give me the eligibility to serve you and then make me your maid servant. That is very important because that signifies that I am willing to do everything required to become fit to serve you. That is something called fitness. There's something called fitness. It is not that, you know, they're beggars in the spiritual world and they're begging for us to come and serve. They're happy. They're happy. We are the ones who are unhappy, having turned away from Krishna. It's out of mercy that they want us to come there. It's not that they're lacking something. Prabhu, just one more before I... Uh, that means to say Bhakti Siranta Saraswati Thakur is the one who introduced the Sanyas order in the Gaudiya Math. He did. Uh, in the Gaudiya Mart, yes, obviously yeah. that was his uh, institution. Okay. That means formally until Rupa Goswami's time or even up to Bhakti Vinod Thakur's time or Jagannath Babaji, it was Babaji Vesha only. Yeah. Things, uh, there were Grihastas and there were Babajis. Okay. okay. So, yeah. but uh, sannyasis were not unheard. During Lord Chaitanya's time, it wasn't like that. There were nine sannyasis, we know. Prabhudananda Saraswati is a very prominent sannyasi. Then uh, the, uh, Lord Chaitanya himself was a sannyasi. Madhavendra Puri was sannyasi. Ishwara Puri was sannyasi. Not that it wasn't there. Okay, okay. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also was ordered by Bhakti Vinod Thakur to introduce Varnashamadharma. And the first step is to introduce Ashrama Dharma. 
And for that, you need to first of all introduce sannyas. So that was the first step in his introduction of Vaishnava Varnashrama, Daiva Varnashrama. Thank you, Prabhu. Hindu Lekha Kripa Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, this is regarding this sannyasa. This one, Prabhuji, even in like uh, South, like Udupi Math and all, they are like all uh, uh, Vaishnavas, Madhva Vaishnavas. So they also have this uh, sannyasa, like in Math and all, they have sannyasis. Yes. Uh, yeah. So is it like uh, what to say, to preach only or to like, uh, as you said, that in Kali Yuga, there shouldn't be any sannyasis? The no, sannyas there should be no sannyas with, uh, as it is implemented within karma kanda. Okay. That is that is technically called karma sannyasa. Okay. So karma the... sannyasa, jnana sannyasa. So there are there are there is sannyas meant for the karmis. Okay. Karmi means a person who accepts karma kanda. He yes, wants okay. to go to swarga and so on. Okay. So that is a whole system within that. Yeah. Then there then... is sannyas for those who want. To attain perfection in the jnana system. There is mm -hmm. sannyas for those who want to attain perfection in the yoga system. Then mm -hmm. there is sannyas uh, within mm -hmm. bhakti also. Mm -hmm. In the Vaishnava lines, there are bhaktas and they okay. also have uh, sannyas for that. Okay. Okay, Prabhupada. Okay, thank you, Hare Krishna. Shailesh Prabhu, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Um, sorry for uh, prolonging the conversation on um, analogy or the, the uh, instructions given by the Pakistan Saraswati. So what consciousness should we be having? Because it's unclear. We shouldn't be what enjoying it. With, with respect to Adam, it shouldn't be enjoyed. So what consciousness should we be having? No, no, no. See, again, the word enjoy has two different senses. Is you translate enjoy as experience happiness. We must experience happiness. But the desire to experience that happiness, that is an, another connotation of the word enjoy. That is not up to the standard of pure devotion service. We should always be aware of different levels of devotion service. Otherwise, you'll be in a delusion thinking that I'm already there. And as long as you're in a delusion, there's no question of attaining Krishna Prema. So the, the desire to enjoy Krishna is a false desire, is it? Not false desire. It's inappropriate. We are Krishna's servants. We are not Krishna's masters. But in, in ultimately in, 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 in Gola Vrindavan, are his servants not actually they are serving they Krishna? They have no desire to enjoy him. Krishna. They have no desire to enjoy Krishna. They are fully happy, but they have no desire to experience that happiness. Okay, I see. So, so you're saying the desire is the, the, the culprit, not the actual happiness in, in actually that possible. unavoidable. When you serve Krishna, naturally you become happy. Leshagni, Shupada, Mokshilagata, Krit, Sudurlava, Sandrananda, Visheshatma, Sri Krishna, Karshini, Chasa. When pure devotion service develops from pure sadhana bhakti to pure bhava bhakti to pure prema bhakti, it becomes intense concentrated bliss. Everyone knows that. We know that. So we know that the living entity will experience intense concentrated bliss on the condition that he doesn't want to experience that happiness. He wants to give happiness to Krishna. That's the entire idea. I am Krishna's servant. I'm meant to give happiness to Krishna. The this, is there for, this is there for all the rasas actually. Very interesting. For those in Dasya Rasa, Sakya rasa, Vatsalya rasa, Madhurya rasa, um, in, in uh, Dwaraka, in uh, Vrindavan, Goloka Vrindavan, everywhere. Very interesting. So in Srila Prabhupada's early days movements, it was uh, in Prashadam distribution was a uh, central feature of attracting neophytes, etc. No, I think that we need to still distribute lots of Prasadam to attract people to take to Krishna consciousness. Right, but even even in um, um, I, I and mean, I can't recall to be honest where I've heard it, but uh, I, I recall hearing Prabhupada saying enjoying prasadam is uh, um, uh, a central feature of being a devotee, or something along those words. See, there are various standards. Raghunath Das 
when he came to puri lord chaitanya gave him his own mahaprasadam and ravanath was eating that for one week then he gave that up and he went to jagannath puri temple and he was begging and lord chaitanya said this is more advanced then he gave that up then he went at one point he was eating the rejected food the food that was rejected by the thailanga cows also and lord chaitanya said this is a profit and the lord went to try to eat that food stuff raghunath was trying to stop there are various standards these levels should aware, be aware of the road map we have to come to the point prabhupada often said that we give up eating sleeping mating defending and we simply want to serve krishna so right now you cannot imagine doing that therefore we are mixing these things with krishna consciousness and at our level it's fine at a particular level it's fine just like when you are in school you are in primary school you are in a particular in 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 india we have different we have first standard second standard referring to each educational year so if i am in the fourth uh, standard uh, i do my exams and i pass everyone's happy with that all my elders are happy with that that doesn't mean that i am uh, you know i have uh, i've have, I have passed my 12th standard exam it's just that i have passed my fourth standard exam everybody is happy everyone appreciates it so there are standards when raghunath das when he was a householder and uh, he was trying to become renounced lord chaitanya chastised him and told him no antare nishtha ko keep your faith within bajje karo uh, what is that what is that he said externally you uh, carry out your duties that you are meant to carry and uh, you be krishna conscious within you perform your duties properly and krishna swaraj goes on explains how for one full year raghunath das carried out that instruction very nicely so at that level that that was the first instruction of the law but then even despite that raghunath das he wanted to escape and come to puri every time he tried he failed then he served lord nityananda prabhu and associates at pani hati who blessed him with the ability to go to puri next time he escaped he went to jagannath puri and lord chaitanya he said i'm very happy with you that you you were like a worm stuck in the stool pit of family life and krishna has rescued you why he didn't say that last year because he was not fit for it adhikar uchita shiksha shiksha has to be given corresponding to the eligibility of the disciple the candidate so it's not that everything is okay or everything is not okay at a particular level particular things are okay when you have gone beyond that eligibility and you have progressed further then the same thing is now considered bad so at a particular status we should eat lots of prasadam avoid non prasadam be greatly happy with that at our level yes but when we progress further and further further restrictions will come progress means more and more restrictions will come we come when we are ready for it krishna will do it but this is the one thing that uh, we understand from bhakti siddhanta saraswati is we get to see the entire road map thank you prabhu yeah this is uh, very lofty standards we have to still aim for thank you for that elaboration anything else all right we will stop with that panchakal padarudhi shri pasandu priya vacha patitanam pavanadhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha